Remember, there are places where a preacher can get in trouble for telling jokes in church. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been talking this morning about God's law, God's commandments, what God expects from us. And we've recognized that some of these laws vary in their importance, but there is one law in particular that I want to use as our focus this morning, and that's from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance for us to do. What this is saying to us is that God has an assignment for us. There are things God expects us to be doing. Reasons for us who have been put on this earth to fulfill. Now the fact that all this comes from God gives us our purpose. For we don't do these good works in order to earn brownie points with God. But rather, God wants us as individuals, as a church, as a community, as a nation, to do good works for one another, to care for them the way God has cared for us. Now God isn't going to come down to earth and do the burning bush thing all over again. We have God's word in scripture where Jesus says, love other people as I have loved you. Or you will be my witnesses. Or go therefore and make disciples of all nations. In our text for today, from 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, Paul tells us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Paul was being criticized, claiming that he did not have the authority required of someone to be an apostle. And his reply was, I'm just clay pot. It's the treasure inside me that gives me purpose. And I remember, and I've told you before about the pastor who preached at my service of ordination, who reminded me with this verse, he said, Ken, as long as I've known you, you've been a crackpot. <laughs> so keep in mind, you are not the treasure. You are just the vessel. The message you proclaim is what's precious. Treasures are things that are important and are of value. God, in his mercy, sent his son into this world to be the price paid for our forgiveness. And we get the privilege of sharing that message. And I love this passage because it reminds us you don't have to be anybody special to do what God has asked you to do. You can't say to God, well, I'm not a good speaker, so I can't do that. Or I hate everybody, I can't do that. Or nobody likes me or whatever excuse you choose to use. Because God's going to come back and say, yeah, I know, so what? You're not the treasure. The message is. So a couple of points I want us to think about this morning. And the first is that God has given all of us talents and abilities. We all have gifts that God has given to us. If you think back in Scripture, there was a young boy who was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. And it turns out that Joseph's ability to interpret dreams is what got him out of prison. And his skill in administration and management is what put him into the governorship position within Egypt. So that when times of famine came, Joseph was there with his talents to administer the grains that had been saved for seven years and then distribute them to the people. There was a general who came into Israel and his problem was he was sick. He had a disease called leprosy, incurable 
in his time. And yet his little servant girl, who was an Israelite, went to her mistress and said, it's a shame that your master will not go and see the prophet Elisha, because he has the power to heal him. Well, you know how it works, guys. If the women want you to do something, <laughs> just give up, because they're not going to shut up. <laughs> and so Naaman went and camped outside Elisha's tent. And I love the story. Elisha doesn't even come out to see him. <laughs> he sends his servant out. Go wash the Jordan River seven times and you'll be healed. <laughs> and Naaman, Naaman pitched a hissy fit. <laughs> I'm a general. I'm important. And he won't even come out and see me? Are not the rivers where I'm from justice delightful? Why should I go do this? And his servant said, if he had asked you to do something complicated, wouldn't you have done it? So why are you fussing? Because he asked you to do something simple. You know the story. He went, he bathed in the river, and came out with skin like that of a young boy. There was a woman named Dorcas. She was good at sewing. And she served her congregation well. But she grew sick and died. And the people there were so upset that they contacted Simon Peter and asked him to come and pray for her. Simon came, prayed, and God restored her to life. The second treasure that you have inside your clay pot is the Holy Spirit. Two Sundays ago, we spoke about how God sent the Spirit of Christ into those apostles in that upper room and empowered them to be bold and go out in the streets and preach the Jesus message. And then last week we talked about how God's Holy Spirit is there within each one of us to give us the inspiration we need to go out and do what needs to be done. Now we heard it in our second lesson this morning that we who are God's children sometimes face challenges in our lives. Paul says that there are people who are perplexed but not driven to despair. There are people who are afflicted but not crushed. People who are persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. How is that possible? We all face challenges. And you know as well as I do the people who crumble under those challenges and who give up and live very sad and bitter lives. That doesn't have to be us. Because God has placed his spirit within us to remind us it's going to be okay. That doesn't mean the phone is about to ring and someone's about to hire you if you got laid off, you got laid off. But God will take care of you. You're not going to get a message from your doctor saying, you've been cured. You might. But if you don't, that's okay too. Because God's Spirit is with you while you are sick. While you are ill. It's a tremendous comfort to know that God's Spirit is with us in all circumstances. And that last treasure we have within us is Jesus himself, who said, I will be with you always. Part of the Ascension Day message is that the disciples didn't get it. They saw Jesus going up into heaven and figured, okay, it's all over now. It was nice while it lasted, but it's finished. Jesus is gone. And I love that response of the angels. What are you looking at? Why are you staring up into heaven? He'll come back. But until then, do what he told you. Go back to Jerusalem and pray. And in a few days, you'll be given power from on high. And so it is that Jesus' spirit was shared with each of the apostles. And 5,000 were converted to Christ that next day. And they went out and shared the message. And they went out and shared the message. 
And the end result is that we sit in Harupa Valley, California, which is a bit of a distance from Jerusalem. And we're sharing that message with one another. God, in his wisdom, made it possible for the gospel message to be shared around the world. And it didn't require Jesus going from country to country. He gave that opportunity to us. And that's our message this morning. That God is with us. That we are a priceless treasure because we contain a priceless treasure. But it wasn't totally priceless. Jesus had to pay that price. For us, it's free. What have you done with your treasures? Have you locked them up? Buried them in the backyard like that one servant did in Jesus' parable? Are you keeping your light under a bushel basket so that others can't see it? You don't have to be anything special because you are something special. You contain something special. And like that lamp, you can provide light to the world around you. Like salt, you can provide flavor to the lives of the people you meet. Use your treasures to create an eternal legacy. Draw upon God's spirit and celebrate the presence of Christ in your life. May the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We worship God with our offering.